I do a ton of cooking. Chances are a lot of you guys out there do quite a bit of food prep. Um, I think it would be smart to go over some of kind of those really fundamental items. And um, I wanna like, get maybe so specific as to give you guys in a couple instances, some brand names because I think they're really important. Obviously I'm not affiliated with any of these kitchen uh, brands, but there are some products that I found to work really, really well over the years. And uh, sometimes when you're not dealing with the best, when I say the best products, I don't mean the most expensive ones, but just uh, a lot of the stuff that's made for use in commercial kitchens, you'll find to be both uh, cost effective and a lot of times it holds up really well. Uh, so I kind of wanted to make maybe some specific recommendations. Without further ado, here's my top 10 kitchen essentials. First thing, a good knife. Now, as you'll notice, okay, this knife has a plastic handle. Okay, it's nothing expensive. I mean, you could spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on knives. This was given to me by a butcher friend of mine. This is considered a breaking knife. Um, it's a type of butcher knife. It's, let's see what we got. I think it's a 10 inch blade. Uh, it's just over nine inches. Usually they come in eight, eight and 10 inch blades. The curve of the blade, just kind of the way that it's, it's shaped, plus it's not too big. It's really comfortable to use when I'm, you know, cutting up say fish or uh, butterfly and chicken, you know, things like that. It's a good, cheap knife. Keep something on hand to keep it sharp regularly but you definitely don't want to be working with crappy knives. You know, on the flip side of things, here's a, a custom knife that was made for me by my buddy at Jones Knives. And, um, you know, you could spend all sorts of money on knives. And of course, this knife is a joy to use. It's razor sharp. And of course, aesthetically, it's pretty freaking cool. Um, but when it comes to just getting it done on a daily basis, one of these things, you're talking maybe 30 bucks. Um, this particular one is RJ Mace, which you can't find online. This is a, a company located in Connecticut that sells to a bunch of uh, commercial kitchens and they do a lot of commercial knife sharpening. Online, uh, Victorinox, and um, don't quote me, I think the name of the company is F. Dick. Uh, that sounds funny, but that's the name of the company. They make a good breaking knife. Uh, you could find them on Amazon. Like I said, you're probably talking 30 or 40 bucks. Can't recommend it highly enough. After knives, you need a good cutting board. Again, nothing fancy. This stuff is, they're basically plastic, HDPE, it's some kind of high density plastic. Two cutting boards, why two cutting boards? So really, you know, for anything that you're gonna cut that's aromatic, right? So onions, garlic, you know, stuff like that has a habit of getting into surfaces and you have a hard time getting it out. Uh, so you don't want it, at least in my opinion, you don't want to be cutting that stuff on a cutting board that you're going to be doing other things such as meats, because then the meat ends up picking up those flavors and the, I don't know, for me, it grosses me out. Um, maybe you like it, I don't know what you're, what you're into, but, um, my opinion, have a second cutting board for all that stuff, all right? But you want a couple of cutting boards. Scale, all right? This is something I use daily, whether it's to weigh out meals, to weigh out, uh, you know, if I'm cooking rice, I'm gonna weigh out the amount of rice. Uh, you need a good scale. Personally, I think it's something worth spending a little extra money on. You can buy cheap food scales, at, you know, on Amazon or Bed Bath & Beyond, places like that, usually they're pieces of junk, all right? Not because they're not accurate, but usually they just don't hold up. The last one I had, right, this is a Rubbermaid commercial scale. Um, it used to be made by a company called Palouse. Um, Rubbermaid took it over, but it's an actual commercial scale. This has a 24 pound capacity. The last one I had for like 12 years, all right? It lasted a long time. It was a great scale. It was maybe about a hundred bucks. Um, I personally feel it's worth the money. 
you might feel differently. And you know, obviously I'm not trying to spend your money, um, but one way or another, you need a scale. This is the one that I do recommend. If you're interested in the model, it's a Rubbermaid 181-2592. I'm just putting that out there because a lot of times I'll recommend products and people go, what, what's the model number or something like that. So there you have it. Oh, so important, okay? A good pan. Now, I've been through so many pans over the years. And I know right now it's very in fashion to use a um, Maybe just a plain old carbon steel pan or a cast iron pan, something that's not non-stick. For me, it's just, it's just easier to use a good non-stick pan. One of these I think cost me around 40 bucks. It's from a company called Volrath. Now this pan, the number on it, the model, it's Z4012. It's a 12 inch pan. It's made in the USA. The pan itself is aluminum but it's coat, coated with some kind of blend of, uh, they call it ceramic guard. So I think it's a blend of ceramic and Teflon. The significance though, these pans hold up. I beat the hell out of these pans. Um, you don't wanna be using something where the coating is coming off in your food. I've, I've used all sorts of pans over the years and not only for the cost, because 40 bucks for a pan isn't terrible, and uh, it's, it's held up better than any other pan. You know, every couple of years, I usually replace them and I'll keep the old ones if I'm making something that would beat up on the pans like shellfish, you know, cause the clam shells and stuff like that, they'll beat up on it, but I'll just keep them around to have, you know, to use for stuff like that. Same thing, Volrath makes really good sheet pans. Now I've had these sheet pans, these baking sheets for like 10 years. Okay, I've never had other, prior to these, I've never had ones that hold up like this. These are also Volrath model 5303 is the number on them. I don't know if that's still a current number. Again, these are old, but you need baking sheets for stuff. You're gonna be cooking stuff in the oven. Maybe you're gonna be roasting veg vegetables, uh, broiling fish, stuff like that. I use these on a weekly basis. I can't recommend them highly enough. This might seem weird, but a pair of tongs. Why tongs? Because a lot of you guys are gonna be grilling, right? And when you're grilling, you don't wanna be using a fork and stabbing, whether it's chicken, steak, whatever it is you're cooking, you don't wanna be stabbing the hell out of it. Using tongs, it's not only much like easier and more convenient, but you're not gonna poke a bunch of holes in the meat and drain all the juices. Get a pair of tongs. Food storage, right? Again, I'm not here to spend your money, but as someone who's been doing this for a long time, this is stuff you're gonna be using on a daily basis. I think it's worth having stuff that's of at least decent quality, right? I've always been a big believer in the Pyrex stuff. Um, it doesn't pick up smells, it doesn't stain. I've had these <laughs> forever. Um, the only thing that happens is sometimes the lids shift the bed. You can buy replacement lids. Uh, this is a six cup size. And uh, for me, this is about a perfect size for a meal. Food storage, like when, I, when it comes time each week and I prep, um, and I have you know, a whole bunch of chicken prepped or, and, or a whole bunch of fish, I'll put it in containers like this. I really like these, all right? They make bigger glass ones, but they don't make them this size. This is fairly large. This is considered, well, 3.8 liters, so basically a gallon, 16 cups. Sterilite makes these, right? they unsnap. So you get a nice seal. They just, they hold up good. They're, it's a thicker, heavier plastic. Um, it's not like some weird, goofy shape. You know, most of the time, you know, stacking two of these. Uh, it fits well on a refrigerator shelf. Now, a lot of these things you want to consider so that the products you're working with, you like working with them, right? Staying on a diet, food prepping, staying on track, all this stuff is hard. So anything you can do to make the process more enjoyable, I think is worth it, right? You, you want to like 
the things that you're working with, and they should help make your life easier. So, again, I'm not spending your money, but I think it's worth investing in some good food storage products. Thermometers, right? Two different thermometers, two totally different uses. One is a refrigerator thermometer. Right? My friend Chris Tuttle talks a lot about this, okay? And it's a really important subject when it comes to food storage is maintaining the proper temperature in your refrigerator, right? Putting one of these, you know, the refrigerator I have happens to have a built-in thermometer. Some fridges do, some don't. Buy one of these cheap little thermometers, stick it on the shelf. Most refrigerators just have a dial, okay? They don't, some of them are digital, right? So you could set it, say 34 degrees, which I think is like the optimal temperature for refrigeration. If your refrigerator doesn't have one, pick one of these up. You wanna know what the temperature is in your refrigerator. You don't wanna be storing food at closer to 40 degrees. Uh, bringing the temperature down, right, into the lower 30s can pay big dividends, right? I don't wanna cook any more often than I have to. And I get away with cooking once a week, right? And I think that's due in large part to the fact that I maintain a really consistent temperature in my refrigerator. I'm also very cautious to not, you know, if I'm, pre if I'm cooking food, I don't go putting hot stuff in the refrigerator. That goes and screws up the temperature. You wanna let things cool to room temperature. It's getting cold out now. Uh, that can be a, a benefit. If you cook a bunch of stuff, put the lid on it, secure it, put it outside, bring the temperature down like that. Why throw off the temperature in your refrigerator, right? So food temperature is very important. On the same similar note, right, a good meat thermometer. So you're making a steak, not only for food safety, but really to get it just right. You, you, might, you might be so experienced that you don't need it. You might know just from, uh, you know, giving it a little poke, but uh, it's good to have on hand. Get a digital one. Don't get, you know, one with the dial. They take forever. One of these things, you know, as soon as I open, I close this thing, as soon as I open it, it tells me right away, oh, the temperature in the room is 72 degrees. I mean, it's, it's fast, it's accurate, and they're not expensive. This one is a Thermapen by the company Thermoworks. Blender, right? Every meathead needs a blender in his kitchen. You're no exception, you probably already have one. If you're in the market for a blender, uh, because either you don't have one or you're gonna replace the one you currently have, you could go one of two ways, right? This was the cheap route, okay? This blender, uh, it's, a, it's a wearing, commercial blender it's actually fairly heavy all right and it's got a decent amount of juice and it's actually made in the usa i think it cost me about 80 bucks which is not expensive it's only got two speeds and honestly it's loud it sounds like a chainsaw which i hate um i recently purchased a new blender it's a vitamix i haven't even used it yet i was going to make a video kind of unboxing it so I can't necessarily put my recommendation on the Vitamix yet because I don't even know how it is, uh, if it warrants the price tag because the Vitamix was around 400 bucks and that's a lot of money. This I think is maybe like a quarter horsepower. The Vitamix is like two and a half horsepower. <laughs> uh, I feel like it probably, you know, I could maybe run it off gasoline. So, and, and I'm assuming it's gonna be a bit smoother, uh, just probably a nicer experience. It'll probably be the last blender I ever buy. Hell, I mean, to be honest, this thing might just last me the rest of my lifetime, but it's just so loud, uh, it makes me wanna rip my ears off. So, get a blender, probably buy a good one, but buying a good one doesn't mean you have to spend $400 and buy a Vitamix. Uh, read the reviews online. This thing works great, it's just loud. I don't wanna recommend it because you might hate it. I kinda hate it. Um, but I have no complaints against it because it works, right? It does the job and it does the job pretty well. Last thing, rice cooker, right? I use this thing daily for like 12 years now. This thing is reliable, it's great, I love it. Um, it doesn't look terrible on my counter. Uh, and one of the things I like most about it, and I think this is the case with a lot of rice cookers, you can do this, you know, you set the time on it, right, that you want the rice to be ready for. It has a built-in clock. So if I put in uh, 6 a.m. and I come down in the morning, 
The rice is ready at 6 a.m. Once it's cooked, it switches over to a, a feature where it just it stays warm. Again, typical for most rice cookers. This one I know is a particularly good brand. They're known for making rice cookers. Zojirushi, it's a Japanese company. This model, which I've had people ask me a million times, you'd think I'd have it memorized by now. It's an NS-TSC-10. Right, in case you're wondering, again, I have no affiliation with any of these companies. Just throwing this stuff out there because I think you guys might find it helpful. Rice cooker is great, not only because, you know, oddly, I'm a pretty decent cook. And I'm bad at cooking rice. I don't know why. It just always comes out crappy. When I use this, the texture and everything, it just comes out perfect. Um, and the convenience factor is just outstanding right to be able to program it um, you know, I could put the rice and the water in it the night before I set the time the next day it's ready when I want it you know when it comes to buying a lot of this stuff you know it used to be like if you'd walk into a place like Macy's or even Bed Bath & Beyond you know they would carry a good variety of products a lot of these stores are kind of going by the wayside because everyone's shopping online so the variety that you're gonna find in these places isn't that great. Even if you wanna be fancy, okay, and go to a place like Williams Sonoma, I found that it's way overpriced. And, um, you know, quality-wise, I mean, you could go to Williams Sonoma and probably spend $100 on a baking sheet, okay? And I can guarantee you it's not gonna be anywhere near as good as this one. There's no way. Um, so a lot of this stuff, right? Say the cutting boards, the sheet pan, the frying pan, scale, thermometers, stuff like that, your best bet, buy online at a commercial, you know, like restaurant supply place. Uh, Ktom, K-A-T-O-M.com is a very popular one. Websterontstore.com, that's very popular. Um, look, look to commercial uh, places because usually, the pricing on this stuff is gonna be pretty decent and the quality is gonna be good too. It might not be the fanciest. I mean, look at this knife. I mean, it's not, it's nothing good looking, but it does the job and uh, it's cost effective. Same thing with a lot of this stuff. So that's my spiel. I hope it was a, a little bit helpful. If there's anything that I missed that you guys think is essential, comment below. I wanna hear what you guys have to say. All right, I'll talk to you guys next time.